Dark Cast Network, Indie Pods with a Dark Side. Happy Monday! We're back with another episode of OMG Monday, where we talk about some of the biggest true crime news headlines from the past week. We'll be highlighting Carly Russell, the woman who faked her kidnapping, Boy in the Box dad, Timothy Ferreter, and QAnon dad, Matthew David Coleman, who killed his two young children. Well, aren't those all lighthearted and not at all disturbing? Awesome. I'm Gina. And I'm Amber. And it's time to get into the headlines that had us saying, OMG! I think most of us are probably familiar with the name Carly Russell, but for those of y'all who don't obsessively check true crime headlines, here's a quick introduction. Carly Russell is an Alabama woman who mysteriously went missing in July after calling police to report a toddler walking across the highway. Officers arrived at the scene and discovered her car and personal items, but Carly was nowhere to be found. After a 49-hour search, she returned home and told authorities that she had been abducted and held hostage but managed to escape. Unfortunately for Carly, it didn't take long for investigators to poke many holes in her story. There hadn't been any reports of a missing child in the area, and investigators found no evidence of one. Carly had also made several interesting searches on her phone right before her disappearance, including, do you have to pay for an Amber Alert? And how to take money from a register without getting caught. She had also searched for bus tickets from Birmingham to Nashville with a departure date of July 13th the day she went missing. To top it off, she had searched for information about the movie Taken, in which human traffickers kidnap a woman, and Liam Neeson has a certain set of skills that he uses to get her back. So needless to say, it wasn't really a surprise when Carly admitted to faking the kidnapping in a ploy to get attention from her boyfriend. (sighs) She pleaded not guilty to one count of false reporting and one count of falsely reporting an incident. On Wednesday, October 11th, a judge found her guilty of both counts, and she was sentenced to one year in jail and to pay $18,000 in restitution. Apparently, she asked for a verdict so they could appeal the case and attempt to avoid jail time. Russell has apologized for what she did, and her lawyer, Emery Anthony, said she is focusing on making sure her mental health is just fine. She also had stolen a roll of toilet paper and a robe from her workplace before she went missing. So she had stolen a robe and toilet paper. I guess she was going to use them in the woods while she was faking her kidnapping or something. And she had gone, she had gotten food also. So, um, Yeah, they found, like, takeout in her car, and uh, her whole story was that she saw this three- or four-year-old kid walking across the highway, and she got out to check on the kid, and this guy, like, came out of the woods and basically kidnapped her and took her over this fence, and that there was a woman there as well, and I don't know, and but she somehow managed to get out. And there wasn't there, like video footage of like neighbors on their cameras of her walking calmly down the street when she was coming home. And then like right before she got to her house, she started running like an idiot. Oh, God. And she somehow managed to escape right next to home. How does that happen? Wow, that's mayonnaise jar. I'm telling you. That's really convenient. (laughs) I'm definitely mayonnaise jar situation here. I... Yeah, I hope she gets the help she needs and realizes that she doesn't need to fake kidnapping to get attention. It's not not the easiest way to do that. No, it's it's, not worth it. It's really not. Not the cheapest way to do it either. It's no, that takes some time and energy and money. No, no, thank you. Okay. This one. Oh man. Oof. Next up. Getting all the jokes out on the first one because the rest of them aren't gonna be real deep. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about Tim Ferreter, 
the 48-year-old man who was accused of locking his adopted 14-year-old son in an 8x8 structure in his garage. Ferreter and his wife, Tracy, were arrested in 2022 after the 14-year-old ran away from home and was later found outside of their school. When police found the teenager, they took him home and asked to see his room. But the teenager didn't have a standard bedroom in the Jupiter, Florida home he shared with his adoptive parents and three other siblings. No, no. Police found an 8x8 structure in the garage of the home that had a lock and a deadbolt that operated from the outside, and a ring doorbell camera attached to the ceiling to observe whoever was inside of it. The room had a box spring and a mattress on the floor, a bucket in the corner, and a desk. The boy told authorities that he would be locked in the room, and a sibling verified this statement, saying the boy was locked inside when he misbehaved. He had been locked inside for as long as 16 to 18 hours, and he was subjected to punishments that were humiliating, isolating, and cruel. Ferreter's attorney argued that his actions were that of a parent struggling to deal with a disruptive child. The Ferreters adopted the unnamed child when he was 17 months old. He has a history of ADHD and a condition known as reactive attachment disorder, which keeps children from forming bonds with their family members and can lead them to act out or make it difficult for them to accept love. According to his attorney, Ferreter was faced with an impossible situation that forced him to make tough decisions to protect the child from self-harm and the other children in the home as well. The Ferreters told police that the teen lied, stole, attacked family members, threatened classmates, and brought knives and weapons to school. So the way they dealt with this was by keeping the child locked up in an 8x8 room for multiple hours a day. I'm not sure if the Ferreters ever sought help for the teen. This is a bite-sized dive into the story, though I did see from the trial that I think they took him to three therapy sessions, and that was it. That was all they tried to do for him. A child psychologist did take the stand during the trial and stated that the boy endured severe psychological trauma, which did nothing but worsen other mental health issues the boy was already struggling with. On Friday, October 13th, 2023, a jury found Tim Ferreter guilty of aggravated child abuse, false imprisonment, and neglect of a child. The maximum sentence in Florida for aggravated child abuse is 30 years in prison. Tracy Ferreter's trial date has not yet been set. The adopted child who endured the abuse is now in the custody of the Florida Department of Children and Families, and their three other children have also been removed from the home. What do you say to that? This is so disturbing. I was actually just talking to my mom about this case before we started recording, and The fact that they obviously didn't do anything to help this child. I mean, even in the trial, it's very clear this child was not medicated. Not saying that that's always the answer, but especially when you're dealing with a kid with ADHD and other issues, it can help, especially when the kid is so young that they don't necessarily understand how to handle all of those different mental, emotional feelings. Mm -hmm. He wasn't medicated. He wasn't going to therapy. He wasn't getting any sort of treatment or help from a doctor. The way they dealt with this was to lock him in a room for multiple hours a day. Overnight, the door did not open from the inside. It didn't even have a light. And how many times have we talked about when the people that we talk about that commit these murders and acts They're just locked away in prison. They don't receive the mental help in prison that they need. And they basically Mm -hmm. just locked this kid in his own prison and home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No windows. There was an air conditioning unit on the wall that he was not allowed to touch. There was a time where he turned it on because he's in Florida. They're in Florida. It is hot. It is humid. He got in trouble for turning the air on in his box because he was miserably hot. I, this is a 14-year-old child that they had had since he was a baby. And I just, I hope they both rot in prison. That's all I have to say. 
And we're talking about a nature versus nurture situation here. This child obviously has problems. He was also in an orphanage overseas where I'm sure that the conditions were not good. I think he got very little human interaction as a baby. And we all know what kind of impact that can have on a child as they get older. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with a kid who obviously needs help and who wasn't getting help. And it's not surprising to me that he started being violent and physically threatening. Acting out. And acting out in this way yep. because he wasn't receiving the kind of support and attention that he needed to thrive. Um, so, yeah, it's just absolutely disgusting. And this might be something that we do cover in an episode or maybe two once Tracy's trial has been done and completed so we yep. can cover the story from beginning to end because that's the way we prefer to do them here. So let us know if that's something you want us to cover on another episode once it's all done and completed. But just just gross. Yeah. Ugh. Our final headline of the day gives off some major Lori Vallow vibes. Matthew Taylor Coleman, a California surf instructor who is currently in custody after killing his two-year-old son, Kaleo, and 10-month-old daughter, Roxy, with a spear-fishing gun in Mexico, has been deemed incompetent to stand trial. A U.S. district judge ordered Coleman to be committed for treatment. His competency hearing is scheduled for March 8, 2024. On August 7th, 2021, Coleman abruptly left the home he shared with his wife in Santa Barbara, California, taking the children with him. His wife, Abby, called the police to report them missing and shared her confusion about the matter, saying they had not been arguing and there were no marital issues. She didn't believe the children were in any danger at the time. Sadly, Coleman drove the children into Mexico, where he rented a hotel room. He then drove the kids to a ranch where he killed them with a spear fishing gun and left them in the brush before returning to his hotel room. A farm worker discovered the small children soon after in Baja, California, a Mexican province about 60 miles south of San Diego. Coleman was caught trying to cross the border back into the United States and was arrested on the scene. According to the charging documents, Coleman allegedly told police that he was motivated by QAnon, specifically a conspiracy theory around serpent DNA and alien reptilian humanoids that masquerade as people to overthrow humanity. Abby Coleman told authorities that she and her husband had been researching QAnon and that Matthew became significantly more paranoid that people around him were involved in this conspiracy. He even began to believe that his wife had serpent blood DNA that she had given to their children. Coleman believed that the only way he could save the world was by killing his children. Of course, friends and family have been trying to reconcile the violent acts with the man they knew, a devoted dad who was pleasant and kind to his surfing students. His wife, Abby, is obviously devastated and confused. She said she had no idea he thought any of these things and believes he must have just snapped. This is such a sad story, and we'll keep you updated on this one for sure. Ugh. I just, I don't understand. I, I don't either, and I'm not going to get into, we're not going to get into the whole, like, QAnon bullshit. Um <laughs> But this feels very Lori Vallow-ish to me oh, because yeah. she had also been brainwashed to believe that people around her were basically being taken over by some like alien type being or something and that her children had been as well. And that's why she ended up killing them. So it gives off very much similar vibes to me. Um, but my question... <laughs> Why were they looking up stuff on QAnon in the first place? I just, I feel like there's more to this that we are not hearing about, you know? And I don't, I don't think that we're going to. No, until maybe once there is finally a trial in this case and we get more background information on maybe what had been going on prior yeah. to this. But it sounds like he probably, 
And we know this. In this situation, he probably already had some mental illness that was not being handled. Or maybe he didn't even realize that he had. Himself, yep. And it's much easier to read or learn or hear about these kinds of things and take them to heart when you're already struggling than it would be if you were in your right mind. So it's just... It's just devastating. And they were packing for a camping trip. Like they were getting ready to leave for the weekend. And they were in the middle of like the hustle and bustle in their house. And he, suddenly he just got up, took the kids, got in the car and left. And she was like, what the heck? Like, where? Yeah. So sad. And, you know, and you, when you want to believe that your children are safe with their other parent. And I'll be curious to see what happens with this one. I'll be hugging my children when they come home. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely act like little alien serpents sometimes, but. (laughs) (laughs) You're not wrong. (laughs) I definitely wouldn't cause them any harm. Just hug them and be like, it's fine, child. (laughs) We'll get through this together. It's fine. Yeah, that's, it's so bad. Well, thank you for joining us for the second episode of OMG Monday. If you have a headline worth covering, email it to us at weirdtruecrime at gmail.com or send it to us on Instagram or TikTok at weirdtruecrime. And we'll see you on Wednesday for our next Wicked Wednesday. Wednesday.